Hi folks, welcome. I'm Vinod and I'm going to talk today about a very difficult challenge when it comes to working in the US, which is about getting the H-1B working visa. I'm going to talk a little bit about the H-1B visa, the chances of getting an H-1B visa, and different programs which students can apply to when they come to the US and how they can increase the chances of getting in and also point out the fact that getting H-1B visa has become more and more difficult for the past couple of years. So let's talk by discussing about what is H-1B visa and why is that important? So typically there are two ways by which students can come to the US. One is that they do a master's or a PhD program in the US and work for a couple of years, then get sponsored for H-1B visa. The second option is that they work in a multinational subsidiary of a US company for a couple of years and then get transferred on something called L1 visa. Now the issue is that for an L1 visa, you cannot change employers, but for an H1 visa, yes, you can change employers during the time you are in the US. Otherwise the H1 visa and L1 visa are pretty similar in um, many ways. Let's talk about students who are coming to the US on a master's program, an MS program or an MBA program and point out the differences. If somebody comes to the US on a MS program and in a STEM discipline, which is an engineering focused discipline, they actually get three shots at applying for a H-1B visa. The reason they get three shots is because the moment they finish their master's program, they actually get sponsored by the university for three years. This is called the OPT period, optional uh, training program period. And during this time, you don't need a work sponsorship by the employer. You can work for the employer and still be sponsored by the university. So during the three years, effectively companies can sponsor your H-1B application three times. The catch is that when it comes to a non-STEM master's program or an MBA program or a master's in financial engineering, master's in finance and so on, there's only one shot at applying for H-1B program, mainly because the university only sponsors you for one year and you're on your own after that. So you may ask me the question, so what happens after one year uh, if the person is not selected for H-1B program? So this is the problem. This is what nobody wants to talk about is that um, the actual chances of getting H-1B visa is close to 28%. And this is basically something like 85,000 slots for 300,000 applicants. So you can calculate the numbers yourself, the less than a 30% chance. So if you do not get your H-1B when you apply for it, when you do your non-STEM master's program or a MBA program, it puts you in a very delicate spot. Companies can choose to either send you back to India or send you to a place like Canada or Europe for a couple of years and then bring you back on the L1 visa. If you don't have an H1B visa, you just cannot work in the US. And to have an L1 visa, you have to work in a subsidiary for a couple of years before you come to the US. So clearly there is no way you can work in the US if you don't get your H1B visa approved. So what happens is that you got to work with the employer. Many employers don't care. They are like, you are on your own. We don't know what next so we don't we want to make sure that we can select somebody else and just kick you out but there are some employers some multinational companies and tech companies typically who send you to maybe canada or europe for a couple of years and then bring you back on l1 program uh, likewise there are some other companies which have bases in india like the big tech companies like google amazon facebook they will send you back to india and hope that you can come back later so this really is a catch behind the H-1B program that there are very few slots and too many applicants. So the way the slots are calculated is that the 85,000 slots for H-1B program out of which 65,000 65, are for the common pool, which is all bachelor's degree students, master's degree students and PhD students put together. In addition, there is a 20,000 slot for pure master's degree students. So the way it works is that all the masters and PhD students get put into one category and out of the total pool, 
20,000 is selected. Whoever doesn't get selected, then move to the general pool where you get selected out of um, all the applicants for a target of around 65,000 slots. So assuming you do your masters, there's a chance of getting in, which is around 28%, 65,000 uh, plus 20,000, which is 85,000, you divide that by 300,000 applicants. The catch is also that the number of applicants has been going up year after year. So what happened during COVID for the past two years is that a lot of people are out of work. A lot of students find that they can't get the great jobs they're looking for. So they're like, let's study further and uh, come back to the workplace after a couple of years. So this has meant that the number of applicants for H-1B visas, which dropped to $200,000 a couple of years back, uh, two years back, has now come back to $300,000, a whopping one-third increase, a 33% increase from 200,000 applicants to 300,000 applicants. And this probably will continue to rise. So do factor in your chances of getting an H-1B visa before you come to the US. Studying in the US can be very expensive and sometimes you may need to work in the US for a couple of years before you go back. But understand that there's only a 27% chance of getting in in your first attempt. And even if you have three attempts, your chances still go up to something like 63% and there is still a 37% chance that you will not get your H-1B visa. So whoever has to come to the US has to be comfortable with the fact that however lucky you are, there is still gonna be at least a 37% chance or even a 73% chance that you may not get your visa if you're in the master's program, a non-STEM program. And even if you're in a STEM program, there's a 37% chance you'll not get your visa. So Keep that factors in mind. If you're a PhD student, the numbers are still similar. There's a 37% chance you'll not get your visas, but it works slightly different for PhD students, uh, a person who has a doctoral degree because uh, the USCIS, who's a deciding authority, prioritizes PhD students over master's degree students. So typically what happens is that if you're working in certain companies, certain spaces, certain critical technologies and in PhD programs, you do get some preferences. So it's very unlikely that you have a PhD program and you are not selected for H1B. Um, but if you are in a master's program, then there's always a much higher risk compared to a PhD program. So hopefully this video was useful, helping you to understand that there's a lot of cost when it involves studying in the US and also working in the US is not guaranteed. So you need to look at the numbers and make a call for yourself. And PhD programs would help you if you absolutely want to be in the US for the long term and you do not like uncertainty. Thanks everyone. So hopefully this video was of help. So please smash the subscribe button. And uh, I would like to hear your comments about what else you wanna hear from me around this topic. Thanks everyone for your time. Bye-bye.